Hey folks, welcome back on The Pursuit of Wealth. Today is Tuesday, November 17th, and in today's video, we're going to discuss the news regarding Tesla getting added to the S&P 500. So that will happen. Uh, the, they're going to be the largest ever new member as well, and that's going to happen on December 21st. So they're not really sure how to add it. They know that it's going to be added to the S&P, but they're not exactly sure what weight to give it, so what percentage um, of the S&P. So we're still waiting to hear a little bit more information on that. We also saw that Georgia says that the voting machine audit found no evidence of fraud. So I know a lot of people said that there was some tampering or there was evidence of fraud and Georgia has just released information today saying that they have no evidence of any tampering of any sort. We also saw that Congress is far away from sending more stimulus as cases surge and economic pain looms. We saw that Amazon opened their online pharmacy today in the US, shaping up another industry for the huge tech, tech giant. So it's going to be interesting to see how the, we'll take a look at the stock in a minute, but it's going to be interesting how they just continue to destroy traditional brick and mortar businesses. We also saw that the home builder confidence in November shatters record high as buyers keep fleeing for the suburbs. So that was pretty much all I had in terms of market moving news for you guys today. So let's take a look at SPY. So SPY today was fairly muted. It was basically fairly range bound today. So we're seeing a continued tightening range, but it could potentially be a daily bull flag at this point. So we'll see if, uh, if the low of the day today holds. So most important today, support from today is going to be 358.34. If we lose that level tomorrow, then chances of a daily bull flag are diminishing. And if we hold that level to tomorrow, then we'll look to break the previous high, which is 362.78. If we can break 362, then we'll look at 364.38 as well. But if we get above 362, then it's quite likely that the daily bull flag is confirming. And then we'll look to all time highs and blue sky breakout. So don't fight the bulls. We did uh, drop a little bit in volume today, but again, could just be bulls taking a little bit of a breather here before they smash into a new all time high. And if we were to see the daily bull flag confirm, then we would have a measured move of roughly 370. So we'll see if 370 is on deck for the end of the week. Taking a look at QQQ, QQQ still a inside, well we did break the inside, we did break Friday's high, so we just barely broke and started to pull back. So we did find resistance at the high of, sorry, on Monday. So we'll see tomorrow how we open up, but we're not exactly in the same situation as SPY. SPY's looking at daily bull flag continuation and QQQ is still moving on the daily, still hasn't set a daily high or low. So we're still seeing the same move right from the low down at 280.62. So anything above 280.62 is gonna be a daily high or low. Bulls got tons of room to establish that high or low. And we also have EMA 12 there as well as a potential bounce zone. BTC bulls tested, almost tested 18,000 today for the first time in about three years. And you can see we're just respecting EMA 12, like I've been calling out for a long time now. It's been a perfect visual guide. If you didn't know anything else in terms of technical analysis, other than this exponential moving average on the 12 period moving average, then you'd, been, you'd be profitable since the beginning of October. So congrats to the bulls. Still haven't formed a weekly high or low since down at 9,800. So when we do consolidate, I'm going to expect a nasty drop at some point. We are approaching monthly overbought as well, so I would highly, I would highly recommend that you wait on any bullish entries at this point if you're looking to invest in BTC for the long term. Well, obviously FOMO is at an all-time high right now as well, and we're eyeing all-time highs. So in my opinion, if you're going to enter, maybe wait for hourly consolidation. So we just established an hourly higher low. So maybe you're looking to enter on an hourly higher low. Maybe you're looking for a daily higher low. There's all these questions that you need to answer and we are holding EMA 12 on the hourly as well. So maybe you want to 
look at entering off EMA 12 and then set a stop just below. But I certainly wouldn't be entering long or on any investments without a clear stop level because we could easily pull back 10, 20, 30, 40% um, once this move does top out. So just, you know, congrats to the bulls, but stay, stay protective and don't give back any of those profits. What else would we have on the day today? The dollar indecision candle on the daily, but try to get a bounce going there into the end of the day. We did confirm a five minute uptrend. So just looking for a five minute higher low. Taking a look at IWM on the daily. So we did close green and we broke the high of yesterday and we're eyeing 178.10 resistance, which we did close above. We closed at 178.50. So we closed, I believe that's a record close for IWM. That is an all-time high record close. So bulls in full control of IWM. Let's take a look at SMH, the semiconductor ETF. So a little bit of a pullback today. We do have a daily inside bar and tightening range on watch. So most important support is going to be 198.49 going into tomorrow and resistance at 201.25. Let's take a look at oil, US oil, trying to get a bounce going and form that daily higher low. So looking to set a daily high, higher low at 4012. And we'll know that that's been established once we change the four hour trend, which we have yet to do so. So once we change the four hour trend back to an uptrend, we can be confident that the daily higher low is set. Gold, seeing a little bit of a pullback today, back within that descending triangle on the weekly, we are back testing that resistance line. So we'll see if it holds, but expecting a break here very, very soon, some point within the next two, one to th one to three weeks. XBI, the biotech sector on the daily. So you can see we had a lower wick and close near the high of the day. And I believe that's an all time high as well. So all time high. Record close, blue sky breakout, XBI and IWM extremely strong. XHB Home Builders ETF, not as strong as the two that we just looked at. XLE, the energy sector, up 1% today, looking to continue its daily bounce, but uh, certainly not setting any all time highs any soon on the energy sector. So definitely a laggard compared to IWM and XBI, XLF on the daily, trying to continue this bounce. Still a ways away from all time high. We do have a huge gap to fill in the chart as well. So potentially would like to see us fill that gap and then resume higher. That will give us, a comp that will give us confidence that the move is for real and just a healthier move on the way up. XLV, so the healthcare sector on the verge of setting a potential daily downtrend. So most important support on the daily is going to be 109.98, but noticeably weaker, but just looking for a daily higher low as we are consolidating on the daily. We'll know that that's been established once we change the hourly trend. So we could be looking to shape, shape up for an hourly higher low. Most important support on the hourly, is one, hourly chart is 110.68 looking to form a new support here at 110.84. And then the high to break will be 111.61. If we break that, we confirm an hourly uptrend and the daily high or low has been established. So moving on from that, we saw that Riot was up about 50% on the day today. Um, I remember looking at this chart to begin the day and with Bitcoin breaking out. So into the pre-market this morning, you can see that we we consolidated a little bit once the bell rang here and it was just all bulls all day long and huge, huge move off of the daily support. So looking back here, we did have a potential daily head and shoulders, but you can see that 314 held. So that was the go signal. We had 314, which was essentially a double bottom. We had 308, 311, we had 314. So almost a double bottom there. 
And then we were looking to form a daily higher low and higher high chain. We were in a daily downtrend. So we were trying to change the trend back to the bulls. And you can see we hit a low of 320 here. And we had support at 314 and 311. So essentially a double bottom. And then we didn't break 314. So if you were scouting that daily high or low on that entry, you'd be up about 90% from that daily high or low. So once we broke 398, that confirmed the daily uptrend. And that's when we saw a huge continuation after Bitcoin's huge move as well, 60% to the upside after the daily confer confirmation of the uptrend. Huge daily volume, daily RSI approaching over 80 now. So heavily overbought, weekly overbought, not monthly overbought yet, but we are down about 4% uh, after hours. You can see we're down to 586 here after hours as well. So congrats to the Riot blockchain bulls. Taking a look at Tesla as we did have the news about the S&P. So I was looking at a potential inverse head and shoulders here in the five minute, but we didn't quite get it. And we started to break down toward the end of the day with a five minute we were looking to form a five minute trend change, which we did. We had a low, high, higher, low, higher, high. So we did confirm a five minute uptrend into the end of the day, which could be our hourly higher low being set. We want to see a little bit more follow through, but uh, essentially looking to change the just looking for an hourly higher low. Uh, if we do lose 433.37, that'll confirm an hourly downtrend as we have a lower high and lower low. So most important support is going to be 4337 and most important resistance is going to be 448. If we can get back above 448, then we have a new higher low established at 433.37. But obviously huge gap after the S&P 500 inclusion news. So we do have EMA 12 support acting as a base of support there as well on the hourly. So be watching that level. And we did close fairly significantly significantly red on the day. Bulls have a little bit of a lower wick there, but wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit more profit taking based on the candle and pullback that we had. A little bit of a sell the news there potentially. So just keep an eye out for that. But if you are looking to enter, now wouldn't be a bad time to enter off of hourly support. You could enter with a stop just below 433. So maybe 429 just as a potential trade idea. You can also take a look at five minute oversold conditions, which we did hit. So you can see here that after that huge move, five minute oversold paid off nicely. So we could have entered at 433 and sold for about a three, 4% profit. And next we'll look to hourly oversold. So we're still a ways away from hourly oversold. We also have a support here on the RSI to be watching as well. So we'll see if we get a bounce on that support line and we'll watch out for an hourly downtrend there as well. Let's see what else we had on the go today. Not really much JMIA up over 11% today. It's kind of a slow day overall. Apple, just taking a look again, I'm not really interested in Apple unless it gets over 130 or breaks below 100. We've basically been range bound between 130 and 100 since we broke out to the, so since the post split. And daily inside bar on watch as well. So going into tomorrow, most important resistance on the daily is gonna be 120.67 and support at 118.96. Taking a look at Canadian MJ, CGC was down over 1% today. Meanwhile, APHA, Aurora, Hexo up about one, four, and five percent respectively. VFF was up huge today, up 23% on the Canadian ticker. 24%. So congrats to the VFF bulls. Not really sure. Must have been earnings on. Yes, it was. So I was on the 13th, but Obviously still seeing, not sure if there's any other news. Didn't see any news about that, but it could just be some, some leftover hype and 
potential momentum from the earnings. I know that uh, Pure Sun Farms has been just crushing it. And you can see that the five minute EMA 12 was just rock solid all day long on BFF. Didn't close a single candle below it. I guess we did hear a, just a little bit of a break there, but not much. But if you would have allowed a little bit of wiggle room there, you would have been, uh, you'd have been comfortably bullish today if you were in a position from the beginning of the day today. Uh, congrats to the bulls there. Other than that, we had Ian up 14%. And truly, I believe, was getting close to the all-time high. So we did have earnings out, record, uh, record revenue. And they are consistently profitable as well. So we did dip below EMA 12 on the daily, and bulls bought the dip heavily on that. We have all-time high. New all-time high at $36, which we closed very, very close within 50 cents. So we'll see if bulls can get continuation into tomorrow, but that was a nasty drop there on the hourly as well. I saw that today. We confirmed an hourly downtrend with a lower high and lower low and dropped about 7% there in, in an hour. So nasty drop there, but bulls recovered fairly nicely, just looking for an hourly higher low and bulls got tons of room to form one of those going into tomorrow. So that's pretty much where we stand. Other than that, uh, just keeping an eye on crypto, keeping an eye on the cannabis space as we look for higher lows on the daily. So CGC, we'll just take a look at the daily chart as well. So we haven't formed any higher low since 2253. We still have this daily bounce going, but could potentially open lower than we close today. If that happens, then we'll look to potential EMA 12 as a support level around the $23 range. And we have support at 2253. So if we do pull back, it'll just be healthy consolidation and we'll look to form a higher low and higher high into the rest of the week. But essentially not seeing as much hype right now. I think it's probably due to Biden, the you know, just the uncertainty about whether or not Biden's going to be entering the White House on the 20th of January, like it's planned, whether or not it's going to be contested. So I think we're seeing hype leave the building a little bit in terms of cannabis, but don't go, don't go sleeping on the cannabis space because as we know, things can change in a hurry. And with Georgia saying that there's no evidence of fraud, it could potentially lead to more buying pressure in the space once again. So that's pretty much all I had for you guys today. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth for another daily market recap. We'll see you tomorrow.